Peter, um, you were telling me that for a long time you'd been struggling, kind of really knowing where you fitted. Although you'd been part of this church all of your life, you didn't really feel you fitted anywhere. Mm. Yeah, basically, um, I started, I don't know, it was quite early on, I started to feel quite isolated. Um, a lot of people around my sort of age group and things like that um, drifted away and I was kind of getting a sense that <laughs> I didn't really feel very cemented in the church. I didn't really feel like I was um, necessarily planted here. I just felt like I was here by proxy just because my family were here and stuff like that. Yeah, and essentially, you know, people didn't really know me. Um, they just knew my family, my mum and dad and my brother. And it wasn't, I didn't really have an identity for myself. Um, yeah. For a while you were thinking, well, maybe I'll go elsewhere and where I'll kind of find my own slot, I'll find my own place where I fit. And then you're on the leaders weekend and tell us what happened there. Yeah, basically, I mean, I, I mean it was related to doing do loss, um, which was something I started doing. And so I went along to the leaders weekend, which I was feeling quite apprehensive about, wasn't really sure um, what I was doing there really. But um, essentially, someone spoke a word to me, um, which was just directly from God. It was just God's word. and it was, it was, There was something that you'd written down as part of doing the Crossroads course, yeah. wasn't there? Was it something about who you were? Yeah, it was kind of um, to do with identity, what brings us life, what really um, brings us joy as well, what we enjoy. Um, for me, the thing I wrote down was creativity and seeing creativity in other people um, and creating myself as well. And it was at the Leaders Weekend when someone came up to me and essentially, I mean, this was just something that I wrote down in my booklet, um, and said, you know, I really feel like God is going to give you opportunities to explore creativity with people. And that was just directly from God. And I just had this, um, this moment when I realized, you know, God saw that. Um, God sees me. He saw that moment when I wrote that in the book. And I was just amazed. I was just so overwhelmed. And I think the one thing that really struck me about that was just that God loves me so much. You know, he just sees every part of my heart and he sees... Um, he sees what I write down, but not just what I write down, what I think, what I, um, just, just absolutely everything. And the fact is, he loves me so much that he just wants to, you know, give me opportunities to do that. And this is incredible, yeah. Peter, Peter described this as an absolutely mind-blown moment, didn't you? There were things that you'd been believing before, yeah. that suddenly, at that point, you saw them for what they were, though, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. It was, um, for a while, a lot of how I've been feeling, I... I recognized as being informed by lies that I was believing um, and stuff like that I wasn't worthy of God's love, that I didn't know God, that I'd never really known God. Um, essentially, I didn't fit here, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, it was kind of in that moment, and it was kind of leading up to that moment where I realized, no, that is a lie from the enemy. That is not from, that is not from me. That is not from God. That's the outside trying to get in. Um, and the fact is, where the enemy is trying to lie, he's trying to rob you of where you should be. And the fact is, if he was telling me, that I shouldn't be here, this is where I should be. Um, I remember there was something that I saw, it was a video that was really useful during Toby's struggles, um, and essentially the sentiment, a portion of it was, um, whenever the enemy tells you a lie, just flip it and you've got God's truth. So I was kind of like, okay, well, I'm hearing that I don't belong here, I'm hearing that I'm not worthy, I'm hearing that I'm not loved. Um, guess what God's saying? <laughs> yeah. What are you thankful to God for? Uh, I'm thankful that he loves me, um, that, you know... Yeah, just a renewed excitement, anticipation for the future. Also, I'm just really grateful that I'm just planted in this church. Um, I think it's really easy because I've been here all my life to take for granted the fact that I'm here. Um, but that's such an amazing thing that I've been here all my life. Yeah, he's put me here and I'm ready to get started. <laughs> Brilliant. Mark. It's not actually Mark's testimony, it's Mark's mum's testimony, but she's not here. She's had problems with her back. Yep. How long has she had those problems and what sort of problems? For over 30 years. Um, she, one time when taking my younger sister off the potty, twisted really badly and slipped a disc. And she's always, for as long as I can remember, had back problems. The other Sunday she responded for prayer, didn't she? Tell us what happened. She didn't really want to come forward. My mum's one of those um, people that sort of says, I don't want to make a fuss, I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that. But she'd been diagnosed about two months ago with curvature of the spine and basically had arthritis in her, in her spine and therefore was, I suppose, in her own mind, was like, well, I'm old now, so I'm going to get 
crooked and I'm going to get twisted and I'm going to get bent. But we wanted more than that. So you, you made her come up for prayer. What happened? Come up for prayer. Um, as everybody was leaving, literally, I just grabbed John and Neil and they prayed very, very briefly and very, very simply. And I thought nothing more of it. And then she visited us again for Oliver's baptism. And just as an aside, throwaway comment, she sort of said, you know what? Since they prayed, I haven't taken any painkillers from my back. And I can stand up straight. And there was four painkillers in the day, quite strong ones, and two at night, just a function. She couldn't get out of bed particularly well. And I know she's sitting on a plane going to Florida with my sister and her family. And I know that she's going to get there feeling refreshed because God heard. And that do it again thing. I said to her, when you get back to church, go and testify in your church. She said, we don't do that sort of thing. I said, well, you need to. Because God's going to release something. Thank you. Good day. Good day. You were telling me that you'd had some financial difficulties for a while with debts building up and stuff, and it all felt a bit out of control. And it even got worse once you started working as well. You spoke to a friend about it and kind of opened yourself up to them, really. What did they do? Um, okay, um... Yes, yeah, so I met with my friend, and then I was just, it's not something that I wanted to tell her, like, oh, I'm in financial difficulties, because I had sort of got myself into it. I'd gone for a holiday that I couldn't afford, and I thought it was so embarrassing, and uh, she was like, oh, okay, it's something that we can look into, and then she said, I would like to help you, um, yeah, and she'll start a budget with me, show me how to manage my my budget and and um, we talked about tithing, how you know it's like the first thing that is really important in life, like before anything. And I did start tithing and I started doing a budget and um early this year I got like a really big bill like um, for council tax because I had not paid my council tax for the whole year and I was I I didn't know how I was gonna pay for it and I was really really stressed about it and when I looked when we looked into the budget we saw that the money was there and like the really exact amount that was needed for the council tax it was there and I just I was just really thankful. So the exact amount you needed, you'd ended up, because of laying yourself open and saying, I want help with this, and tithing as well, you'd found the exact amount you needed, you'd actually managed to save over that period. Wow. What are you thankful to God for? I'm really thankful because God is a provider and he's always a guy. He's always there. When you think, oh, you can't manage, he's always there. And, and he knew... Before I, because me, I thought, how am I going to do it when I got myself in the muddle? And he knew that that council tax bill was going to come, and he helped me with all this savings. And I'm also thankful to friends as well because um, opening up sometimes it, <laughs> me, I'm not somebody who really opens up that easy. So, but I've, I'm glad I did open up because I'm actually free at the moment. And we're really pleased about that. <laughs> Laura. Laura, this time four years ago, your first baby was born. And after a, a day of being home, there were some concerns about him that the midwife had just... Um, so we'd bought her home midwife came and basically told us that Joe had lost weight. Um, you can imagine your heart's in your mouth. We're told to go back to hospital. Um, we go back to hospital. Um, they check him over. They basically notice that he's fitting. Um, sorry. Um, they're obviously concerned... They're not quite sure what's going on. Um, Joe has to stay in overnight. We come back to hear that basically they're diagnosing Joe with meningitis. 
Um, as you can imagine, obviously your first child, you have no idea what to do, what to say. Um, the whole family's gathering. Um, they offer that Joe could be baptised and they're basically preparing us for the worst. Keep going. Um, I've got the opportunity. Again, I feel God's hand in this to actually ring John. Um, and basically, I, I say this as though I said it really calmly and I basically said... John, they're saying they're going to turn the machine off in 30 minutes um, and that Joe's going to die. Please pray. I'm sure I was not that calm. (laughs) Um, And um, John was amazing, as always, saying God is with me um, and that he would be getting people to pray. Um, So that happened, people were praying... And actually, they, they didn't turn the machine off. And you saw, you saw a real change in Joe. But what, was the, what were the doctor's predictions for his life and his quality of life? Um, so that night, obviously, they didn't turn the machines off. And they, they were saying, oh, no, we're going to keep going. Um, the doctors were basically saying, oh, we're going to try this, we're going to try that. Um, so it was literally um, seven weeks in Homerton. And then Joe was taken to Great Ormond Street for a week. Um, Joe came home, but they were basically saying that Joe would uh, be closely monitored by doctors to kind of see um, how he was growing. But they were basically saying he wouldn't walk, wouldn't crawl, wouldn't talk, were very negative and not really giving us much hope. That was four years ago. How's Joe now? Joe, as you can probably see, is walking. Um, he's walking. Say hello. Say hello. Who's that? Who's that? Say hello. Say hello. Who's that? Hello. Um, and basically, we only have yearly appointments with the doctor. Um, the only thing they're saying is that his development is about six months behind and they're saying that Joe could have actually been like this anyway. They can't actually say anything is wrong with him, which is just amazing, and we thank God. <laughs> so we, we're just so thankful for God and we are basically saying God has done a miracle in Joe and continues to do that every day. For me, it's been a really tough journey. The last six months has been quite a roller coaster. But as me and the kids have stepped out in faith um, and really given stuff over to God, God has really met us head on. Jo is in a local nursery and absolutely loving it. Um, Finances are being sorted out as I am, again, putting faith in God to deal with that. Um, I'm just really thankful for God and I'm striving to be the best parent I can and I know that is by following him and giving him the reins.